Well, let's start with the what we think are the conclusions of the Mueller report that on the central question of collusion, it didn't find it. You led this investigation from the start. Were you stung when you heard that? Did you expect it? No, I didn't know what answer the special counsel would arrive at. When I was fired, we hadn't finished the work, so I didn't know what conclusion it would end up at. I think it's good that he was able to finish the work and establish both that the Russia thing wasn't a hoax, right? the Russians interfered in the election in a huge way, and that's really important. And then another piece of good news, the evidence didn't establish that any Americans conspired as part of that effort. That should be good news no matter what party you're associated with. But was it good news for the investigation that you started? Did you go back after hearing this and say, maybe there wasn't a there there like I thought? Oh, no. It, it, the investigation had to happen. It would have been irresponsible not to investigate. And we don't investigate, despite what the partisans say, to find a particular result. We investigate to find out what's true. And as best I can tell, it looks like Bob Mueller was allowed to do that, and that's a great thing. When you were involved, though, did you think it was going to lead to something? Were you convinced in your mind that there was a strong possibility that this campaign, this, this presidential candidate at the time, was colluding with I, Russia? I really didn't know. There was smoke, and enough smoke to justify investigating. And obviously there was overwhelming evidence that the Russians were interfering in the election to hurt one candidate and to help the other. But whether Americans were conspiring with them, I didn't know, but we had to look at that. Do you take this as a rebuke of you and your leadership and the FBI? No, I actually see it the other way. It establishes, I hope, to all people, no matter where they are on the spectrum, that the FBI is not corrupt, not a nest of vipers and spies, but an honest group of people trying to find out what is true. And that's what you see here. And that's why it'll be important to read the entire report. But based on what I've seen, this is a good thing. Parts of the report are confusing, but this is a good thing. You go around the channels and you'll see a lot of people saying the country has been through hell for the last two years. And the question of was it worth it? You seem to be saying it was worth it. Yeah, I, I don't know what people are thinking saying we shouldn't have investigated, right? Remember where this started. In late July of the election year, we knew the Russians were engaged in a massive effort to hurt Hillary Clinton and help Donald Trump. And then we learned that a Trump campaign advisor had spoken to a Russian operative about the dirt they had on Hillary Clinton before any of us knew anything about it. How on earth with the FBI, leave that alone. The president is taking the Mueller news as complete vindication. It was just announced there was no collusion with Russia. He's making it based on a pretty bold claim in that four-page letter we got from Attorney General Barr that there was no coordination, there was no collusion. The language was pretty clear. There was nothing between this campaign and Russia. So on that basis, should he be breathing a, a sigh of relief? I don't know that I read the letter from the attorney general that way. I read him as saying the special counsel didn't find that the evidence established that there was any conspiracy between an American and the Russians. What other evidence there is, what evidence there might be that falls short of that standard, I have no idea. Established is the word that you're honing in on there? Correct. And so I don't know what the special counsel found. And I'm prepared, I hope everybody is, to wait and get the transparency that we need. Then there's the obstruction of justice issue and that tweet from Comey just this weekend, standing in the woods. So many questions. What are your questions? They're all about the obstruction piece. Obviously, I want and I think the American people should want transparency on the so-called conspiracy piece. But the obstruction piece confuses me. I think both Director Mueller and Attorney General Barr are entitled to the benefit of the doubt. Let's unpack it here. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Mueller decides not to make a judgment on, on that particular issue. Does that alone surprise you? It does. The purpose of a special counsel is to make sure that the politicals, in this case the attorney general, doesn't make the ultimate call on whether the subject of the investigation, the president of the United States, should be held criminally liable for activities that were under investigation. And so the idea that a special counsel wouldn't reach the question and hand it to the political leadership doesn't make sense. I don't, I don't, I'm not prejudging it, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense on its face. And so I have a lot of questions. But do you think that. it was Mr. Mueller's responsibility to come to a determination on that potential charge? Well, it was certainly his charge in general to investigate fully and come, if he could, to conclusions. I don't know why he didn't hear, and I don't know what combination of law and fact led him to that, which is why I'm going to wait and hear the explanation, which I hope will come.
And on the issue of whether you need an underlying crime to prove obstruction. Is that a legal principle that, that you have always understood? No, that's part of my confusion. I don't think the AG said that was the justification. He cited it as a factor. And that's just not been my experience as a prosecutor for decades. Every day in this country, people are prosecuted for obstructing justice to avoid embarrassment, to avoid harm to their business, to avoid threats to their families, where there isn't an underlying crime that they committed. And you wouldn't want it any other way, because if you had to always prove the underlying crime, you would create incentives to obstruct, because people get away with both if they successfully stop an investigation. You want this whole thing out? Oh, it has to. Because the bedrock of the Department of Justice, which Bill Barr loves and Bob Mueller loves and I love, is that people have faith and confidence that it's not part of a political tribe. And the only way to establish that and to protect that bedrock of their confidence is to show them your work. And so we have to see it here. Do you ask yourself why Mueller did not subpoena President Trump to try to get, the heart, to, get to the heart of this intent question on obstruction? Yes, I do. And I don't know the answer to that. I have the same question about how the attorney general could resolve the question, which he says in his letter turns upon the president's intent without the president having been asked what his intent is. Then there was your firing. May 3rd, 2017, you go before the Senate Judiciary Committee. You talk about a lot of things, the Clinton email server, but you declined to answer questions specifically about evidence of collusion at that point. A couple of days later, you're fired. A few days after that, I sit down with President Trump. In fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made up story. What did you think when you heard that? I thought that's potentially obstruction of justice. And I hope somebody is going to look at that. Again, the president appears to be saying, I don't know what's in his head, which is why I can't reach the conclusion. What he appears to be saying is, I got rid of this guy to shut down an investigation that threatened me. Up until that point, you had been fired. Was it, was it possible that he had fired you simply for the reason stated in the initial letter that it was your handling of the Clinton affair and nothing more, nothing less? Anything's possible with this president. It's possible he was lying to me when he told me earlier in the year how well I had handled the Clinton thing and that I had taken a beating but behaved honorably. Maybe that was a lie and he really had harbored concern about my violating Department of Justice norms or something doesn't seem likely to me. And then obviously his interview with you kind of put that to rest. But you, he said the Russia thing and you thought it was because of, of Russia? Because he said so. Yeah, th so I did, yes. And that in your mind would have been obstruction of justice? No, potentially obstruction of justice. And it's complicated when it's the President of the United States, given his authority over the executive branch. But you would certainly be irresponsible not to explore whether that is obstruction of justice. What they did. It was a false narrative. It was, it was a terrible thing. Uh, we can never let this happen to another president again. The president says this should never, ever again happen to an American president. What do you think about that? Yeah, close your eyes. Again, change the names. Let me make one up for you. The Iranians, this is totally made up, the Iranians interfere in the election to help elect Barack Obama because they think they'll get a better nuclear deal from him. And during that election, an Obama aide meets with the Iranians and talks about the dirt they have that will help Obama get elected. And the FBI finds out about that. We should not investigate that. And then President Obama's national security advisor lies to the FBI about his contacts with the Iranians. And then the president, Obama, asked me to drop an investigation of that and then fires me and says, I was thinking of the Iranian thing. And then he invites the mullahs to the Oval Office and tells them, that FBI director was a real nut job. I lifted a lot of pressure by firing him. Who on earth doesn't think the FBI should investigate that? So the hypocrisy is revealed just by changing the names. The FBI did what it absolutely had to do. The American people should be glad it's there and proud of it. And the rest is just lying and noise. And about calls from prominent Republicans to open up an investigation into the FBI and Justice Department's roles in starting the collusion investigation. Look, it'd be like going to the dentist. I don't love going to the dentist, but I believe in going to the dentist. And so if there are questions that haven't been answered in the hours and hours and hours of testimony I've given, of course, I'll answer them. I want it all done in the light of day, though. No more secret depositions. Public hearings serve the public interest. And so if there are questions to be asked about how we handle this investigation or any other, let me know when you want me.
Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.